Welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. We've come uh, to worship Christ crucified, to remember our, our friend and sister in Christ, uh, Sue Hendershot, and to uh, share God's love that's been received uh, by Sue in the waters of baptism in all of us, a, a love of, that promises resurrection in the face of death. Uh, I see we have quite a few visitors here today, and that's wonderful. You, know, you should have a bulletin uh, that, that came in that will help you follow along the worship service. We're going to sing uh, a couple verses of quite a few hymns today in, in honor of our, uh, our friend Sue, uh, who loved to sing and loved to sing in the church. So why don't we stand? And we're going to sing verses 1 and 6 of that red hymnal, All Creatures Worship God Most High. of our worship this evening who remembers Sue's baptism that called her into a life of faith and into the church. All who are baptized in Christ Jesus have put on Christ and in her baptism Sue was clothed with Christ and in the day of Christ's coming she shall be clothed with glory. Thanks be to God. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, who formed us from the dust of the earth, who by your breath gave us life, we glorify you. We glorify you. Jesus Christ, the resurrection of life, who suffered death for all who humanity, who rose from the grave to open the way to eternal life, we praise you. We praise you. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, the comforter of all who sorrow, our sure confidence and everlasting hope, we worship you. We worship you. To you, O blessed Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Let us sing two verses, one and four of hymn 817.
Share with me Psalm 23 on the bottom of page 3 in your bulletin. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Lord and your staff who comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Let us pray. God, we give thanks this morning, remembering our sister Sue. We thank you for giving her us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. And in your boundless compassion now, Lord, console all of us who mourn, giving us your aid so that we might see in death the gate to eternal life, so that we may continue our course on earth in confidence until by your call we are reunited with all those who have gone before us. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us sing verses 1 and 3 of Here I Am, Lord, 574. You may be seated. Holly's going to come forward, uh, a friend of hers here at Messiah.
Hi, everybody. This is a great tribute to Sue. She would just, she loves singing in the choir, and she would so love to know that you're here. I'm sure she does know it. Big thank you, Tyler. I'd like to say a few words about the Sue that I knew. Uh, we met in choir at Messiah here. She was a fellow alto and also a fellow nurse, and we bonded quickly. We had a lot of things in common. We both loved traditional worship, but we went to contemporary because our families weren't there. <laughs> she was smart, educated, witty, brave, and caring, especially caring towards her family and her destiny daughter, Jamie, whom she loved dearly. She was a survivor. She survived cancer. She survived a painful divorce, relocation. She was a real overcomer. And her deep faith, I think, just led her to be this way. She was brave. Uh, once after an operation, she had a bleeding condition. Jamie called me and I had to remove some bandages that were stuck to a graft site. And I won't get into nursing detail here, but it was a slow process to get them off. And she just never made a whimper. Just talked like we were sitting next to each other in choir or something through the whole thing. She was so brave and what was sure to be a painful thing. And she was a kind of a quiet leader she led, she taught nurses how to be nurses. She taught others to be humble and giving by her own selfless example to help those in need. And that included me. She also had a very dry wit, and I don't know that a lot of people knew that. I'll tell you a story. <laughs> I'm glad my husband isn't here. Once during the COVID epidemic, we were in the car together and uh, we were talking about our vaccination status. How many of you had, how many of you had this one, what kind did you get and so on. <clears throat> so I told her that my husband refused to be vaccinated and his logic was, oh, I just trust my immune system. Sue said, ha, put that on his tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> Very dry wit, <laughs> very dry. We shared a lot of nurse stories, uh, some sadnesses and some humor, dallow humor, some people will call it, but we really understood each other. The last time I saw her, she was, she was well into her disease process, but she, she knew who I was. This was last fall. And um, we took a walk in the garden and we talked and we laughed and we hugged and I treasure this memory and I treasure all the memories I have of her. I'll miss her but I know that she is in a better place. She's free of pain. Um, she's happy and she's sitting with our Lord in glorious heaven happy and at peace. God speak, would you pour down like rain, washing my eyes to see your majesty, to be still and know that you're in this place. Please let me stay. God 
not speak when you pour down like rain, washing my eyes to see your majesty, to be still and know that you're in this place. Please let me stay and God speak. Our Holy Gospel is from uh, St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. So this is Jesus uh, speaking to his disciples before he's arrested, and which would lead to a torture and his death and then resurrection. So Jesus says to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me, for in my Father's house there are many dwelling places. And if it were not so, would I told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and I prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. And Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How are we going to know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And if you know me, you will know my Father also. And from now on you do know him, and you have seen him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Christ. You may be seated. <clears throat> I meant to have uh, two other scriptures read uh, this evening uh, that reminded me of Sue. The first one shouldn't be a response or a surprise at all. It's Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know the Lord is God. It is he that has made us and we are his. We are his people. We are the sheep in his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. And the other one is from Galatians, from Paul's letter. In the fifth chapter. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence. But through love, become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I wanted to start with that scripture, those two scriptures, because our best lives are lived when we live them in the pasture of the Lord, to use the language of the psalm. In our, in our broken world, we believe that the church in its own brokenness is still the pasture of the Lord. It is here that we have the opportunity to worship the God that has created us, to, to make a joyful noise to the Lord in that worship. It's, it's here that we surround ourselves with other sheep, enjoying the presence of God, caring for each other as we huddle against dangers in this world, and then finding and sharing the best grass leads us to the best life possible. We can find God anywhere. You don't need to come into a sanctuary to find God. But we are more likely to find God's spirit in this world when we surround ourselves by the people of God. Our best lives are lived in the pasture of the Lord, the church, and Sue Hendershot knew this as well as any of us. She grew up in North Canton, destined to be a doctor and an, or a nurse because her father was a doctor and her, sister, her mother was a nurse. And her two brothers became doctors and Sue became a nurse. And they married nurses and doctors among them. They had a, a plethora of professional medical people in their family. Uh, she... Uh, served as a nurse in all sorts of ways, and in the last part of her career, she trained up a generation of nurses at 
various colleges, ending at Ohio University in Zanesville. A doctor married to a nurse, it, it sounds idyllic, uh, sort of the, the perfect sort of house that you would think of, but, but her uh, married life and fam family life, as Holly indicated, was anything but idyllic. It was, it was chaotic and, 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 and messy. Uh, because of addictions and the problems that that caused and the ripples that that caused around finances and family and having to move around. And Sue was in that marriage for 42 years into her 60s before she uh, got a divorce. And it's a testament, I'm sure, to the seriousness with which she took the promises that she made in her vows. And she stayed that long in that chaotic marriage. And the constant in the midst of that, the thing that she relied upon was work in the church. Wherever their family ended up moving for a new job across the country in various spots, Sue would find the local Lutheran church and join and become a part of that congregation. She would find a place not just to worship, but a place to serve. She sang in every choir of the churches that she belonged to. She served as a Sunday school teacher and a youth advisor and a welcome chair. And, and I'm betting if Sue was here, she could tell us seven other things that she did in the congregations that she served. Her, her hand would shoot up when an extra hand was needed. And through her church family, God became a refuge for her, right? Uh, a safe pasture in the midst of what could be a chaotic life, a place where she found peace and joy. Paul, in his letter to the Galatians that I read, tells us that our lives of faith should be marked by love for one another, a love that serves one another, a love that sacrifices for one another. And it's kind of a counterintuitive thought that, <clears throat> that no matter how difficult our life is, it is a better life if even in the midst of those difficulties, we are people who sacrifice, who are generous towards our neighbors, even when we don't have a lot left to give. That that touching of the spirit and those acts of generosity and sacrificial love open us up in the midst of our brokenness. So... While Sue was a junior high Sunday school teacher at Cambridge Lutheran Church, she got to know uh, one of her students who she also, uh, her children went to elementary school with, and that 13-year-old was Jamie, who we know well here. And Jamie herself uh, was in a chaotic space in her life, difficult place, and Sue became a safe refuge for her, a, a refuge that that helped her not just survive, but thrive. So through her teenage years, Jamie would often spend four or five nights a week at Sue's house. And eventually, uh, living with Sue all the time. Sue kept Jamie from going down a different road that would have led not just to dysfunction, but possibly destruction. And she did that by giving what she had left at the end of long days herself. And in that, Sue was blessed, finding a better life for herself, too. It's good when we serve the Lord. Sue came to us uh, about when Jamie graduated, and the two of them decided that job prospects would be better in Columbus. So they moved further west out here to Columbus. Sue continued to work in nursing with students through OU Zanesville and Jamie found a job around here, and they made this congregation their church. And it became an important place for them. Jamie got involved in our, in our education programs and in our welcome programs. And Sue, of course, joined the choirs and began to sing with us. They worshiped together weekly at Contemporary, and as Holly said, not because... Sue would rather be there than traditional, but she'd rather be beside Jamie in worship than not. And they've both been part of our great life together here. 
And later, when Liliana came and became a part of Aunt Sue's life, this beautiful niece became a source of great joy for Sue, too. And even in the midst of dementia, Liliana could bring a smile on her face. And Sue will be missed greatly by Lily, as she will by all of us. You know, what's regrettable for us here at Messiah, this congregation, is that in our entire time that we've had with Sue, well over a decade, she's been battling leukemia and a bad heart. It's, she's been sick since 2009. Those battles would put her in the hospital sometimes, they'd make her sick. At home, they would bring pain to her and make her uncomfortable. But as Holly said, one wouldn't know it, how she was feeling. Sue was stoic in her physical pain, smiling and showing up to the choir on Thursday nights and worship on Sunday mornings. She didn't like to be the center of attention. She could play the piano and the organ, but didn't like all the focus on her, and so she rarely volunteered to do that. A few years ago, she was diagnosed with vascular dementia. When she got lost walking her dog in the apartment complex, Jamie had to get help from Sue's brother for further care that took place up in Finley. And that was about 18 months ago. And the dementia grew worse, and her health grew worse, and, and it brought us here. I just want to make the, the simple statement that Sue is evidence that, that gives me hope and courage in the midst of my life of faith. That, that living in a community of, of other children of God, other sheep looking for the best pasture. It can help us find life in the midst of death. To find a whole life even where we have disappointment and disease. That none of us needs to be rich to be generous. We just need a desire to sacrifice for our neighbor. The riches and the blessings we already have. And the Holy Spirit that has transformed us. And made us God's people. Sue will be missed. She'll be missed by all of us here. Her positive energy and her easy smile and her dry biting wit. Her stoic nature. And her commitment to serve. She has left her mark on us. And it's a mark made in the shape of a cross. Sign of Jesus' sacrifice for each of us that we have been marked with in the waters of our baptism and are called to go and sacrifice and serve for others. Because in that sacrifice, we will find life, whole life. Well done, good and faithful servant. Amen.
standing as we lift up these prayers. Creator God, in the waters of baptism, you have called each of us to faith. May the cross of Christ that has saved us be a cross that we rely upon now in the midst of our mourning. Make us people, Lord, that are faithful. Make us children of God that live a life of sacrifice and service for others. Lord, in the midst of feeling the sting of death tonight, may we have trust in the good news of the resurrection that promises life for each of us. Lord, help us find that life in the midst of our struggles that we have tonight. And comfort all of us who mourn the loss that we feel at the passing of Sue. And may we trust in the good news of her life that is in your hands now forever. Lord, in our own journey of faith, feed us along the way. Help us find the best pastures, the greenest grass, to share with one another around wine and bread that you promised in the mystery of faith to be present within. Help us trust the promises, Lord, that will bring us life, promises that Sue leaned upon all of her life. And feed us now with your presence, the very bread of heaven where your presence will be overwhelming that Sue enjoys and dines on daily now. Lord, help us trust the promise that you will be here when we gather and ask. As Jesus told his disciples in the night he was betrayed, where he took bread and broke it and gave thanks, said, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and he blessed it and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a sign of the new covenant shed in my blood for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this wine, we proclaim the mystery of faith that Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Find us in this house of worship. Bind us together as your people in this congregation. Send us to share the good news of the presence of Christ that we have found together in the waters of baptism. Sharing joyfully the spirit that is alive here. Amen. Pray with me, please. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Hold the Lamb, the precious Lamb of God, who bore all my sin that I may live again. The precious Lamb of God, holy is the Lamb, the precious Lamb of God. Why you love me so, Lord, I shall never know. The precious Lamb of God, thank you for the Lamb. The precious Lamb of God, because of your grace I can finish the race. The precious Lamb of God, the precious Lamb of God. It is good to have so many visitors here 
Uh, we invite you to this meal that we're going to share together. This isn't a Lutheran meal. This is a Christ's meal. And uh, God is anxious to meet you uh, with this wine and this bread. So come and eat with us uh, this evening. You are welcome here. When you come forward, uh, take an empty cup at the center. I will share bread with you in this wafer. And then you'll go to left to right and they will pour wine into your empty cup for the wine. Come and eat. All will be served here.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in his grace. Amen. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all those whom you have fed with this heavenly food. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. So we end our, our worship services with this uh, oldest of prayers that's in this liturgy, this commendation. It's a, it's a prayer that, to encourage God to recognize those who God has claimed in baptism, a sheep of his own fold. So now let us commend Sue to the mercy of God, our maker and our redeemer. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Susan Marie Hendershot. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of all the saints in light. Rest eternal, grant her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. Amen. Sing this pretty hymn, 313. This final prayer is for all of us who grieve. O Lord, support us all the day long of this troubled life until the shadows lengthen for us and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then in your mercy, Lord, grant us a safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at last as you have given our sister Sue. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And a blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you all with favor and grant you God's peace. Amen. We are going to end with praise to the Lord Almighty, hymn 858. And since it's our last song, let's just sing all four verses. It's a beautiful hymn. All four verses, Ernie.
So who has found peace, may you find peace tonight and go and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.